Maybe I have questioned what is in front of my eyes my whole life. Not so ideal for my parents and those attempting to direct me into a reasonable, content existence. But what can I say? I have just the right amount of strengths and self-management skills to sneak under the radar, and just enough campaigner and rebel to cause a ruckus. What I have never questioned is what I see without my eyes. A deeper understanding of the wisdom and flow of life that is happening beyond the rat race. A depth without borders, a depth outside of the box. I am here in these words projecting out of your speakers to shine a light on a different idea. To spread seeds of possibility, to offer balance and disruption, to adjust the camera towards the kinks and shadows of ourselves, and to appreciate every nook and crevice of our existence. I am offering this podcast as a collaborative experiment with life, a journey of freedom making and change shaking, a new way that starts within you. Well, this is not exactly where I plan to be with this podcast. It is not the direction that I planned, nor did the footwork for. Nor is it what I had already recorded and edited. Instead, while I was ready to launch what I had created so lovingly over the past couple of months, life piped up and uncovered a pandemic, which suddenly had me feeling like the episodes I had created were no longer relevant. I mean, it's a totally different world. And if you're anything like me or like most people and hold any deep-seated, however untrue idea about yourself that is about not being good enough in any way, you can understand how I ran into the proverbial brick wall of my creations and thought to myself, well, I guess this isn't happening anymore. But the bigger part of me knows better than that. The bigger part of me knows that everything is an opportunity if you just ask the right question. So my question became, what kind of podcast am I going to do now? How am I going to do a podcast in this new world? And from that place, this currently unnamed podcast was born. I don't believe that some people are unique and game-changing special people and that others are not. I think there are as many unique characters in this world as there are numbers of people. I believe that we all have an expressive potential, and I want to find people who choose to bust out of the confines and parameters of the heavily trodden structures of our existence, to talk to those off the beaten track, and to uncover the parts of us that are outside of the box. So a story that comes to mind about an early experience that led me out of my own box was actually a spiritual experience. This came about um, on a yoga mat of all places. Before it was a trendy thing to do that you could find everywhere, before you could drink beer while practicing or heated buildings popped up everywhere, and before there were outfits that became a style, I found myself in a traditional yoga class because I had nowhere else to go. I was a year out of high school and starting out in my full-time working life, supporting myself active and productive as ever when I was in a car accident. T-boned, which resulted in my shoulder being crushed in and almost totally immobile. After a year of WCB physiotherapy training, acupuncture, massage, multiple times a week, every week, I still couldn't work, and I still couldn't raise my arm away from my side in any direction, more than about 10%. A very dear, um, against-the-grain, wild and crazy, considerably older-than-me friend said I should try yoga. So what the heck, I had nothing to lose but maybe a small sign-up fee and everything to gain. I found a quaint class with a wise islander teacher who was skilled enough to adapt the practice for me so that I was physically able to participate. A short few months later, I had more mobility and strength than I had had the whole previous year, and it just kept getting better and better. Enough said, right? Well, actually, I discovered a completely brilliant something deeper that I wasn't even looking for, a way to have a relationship with my inner self. Something I perhaps always knew but couldn't quite put my finger on. 
So much of life started to make sense. I learned the balance of living from the inner life and the outer life. And even deeper than that, I started to understand how much what is going on inside actually reflects on the outside. I started to know what it is meant by our invisible power and how far we can actually expand and become that is way outside of what I had already come to know. I have not yet done away with the boundaries of what it is to do life quote-unquote right. I am on the possibly never-ending journey of unveiling those and shifting them. But I have a rebellious part of me that wants to push really hard on those boundaries forever. And I also know that sheer determination is always best mixed with the humility of yielding, of giving way to our true nature, of honoring all the parts of ourselves. I want to leave no rock unturned, even the hard and heavy boulders. And I also want to do it as gently as possible. There is something about our humanness that I find fascinating. Something about humanity that I want to fully be a part of and know so much more about. And the irony is, for those that know me the most, is that the biggest struggle I have is generally human. I am certain I am not alone in this matter. Like, isn't it the best to stand in the middle of a 10,000 person crowd all roaring together in excitement? Or the feeling of standing up for a cause so dear to your heart and having a win. Or watching a child, sibling, friend, or any loved one overcome something so huge for them. So many things that are absolutely elemental of humanity and amazing. And then there's always what seems to be the other end of the spectrum, the shadow. I know for me that it is heart-wrenching to see the flippancy between a person and their home on this earth, or the injustice, disrespect, and neglect of one another that so many people experience, or simply all of the common daily subtle feelings of me against them, blame, fear, and resentment, all wrapped up into a package of this human journey. We are fascinating, to say the least. There are so many things about our humanness that is understood and explainable in science and psychology, and yet there is so much about our makeup that is yet to be known. Many researchers and studies can find the common threads between us, and at the same time, we always get back to that fact of our individuality, which is really our gift, isn't it? We are always choosing how we experience our life happenings. Kind of like one of those choose-your-adventure books that were around when I was a preteen. Only in our case, there's never just two choices at a time. If only it were that simple sometimes. Even right in this moment, I am at home on a weekday. I have lost my main stream of income. I have taken on a completely new role at the Center for Spiritual Living, which is the charity that is sponsoring this podcast adventure. Thank you very much. And I am now getting three weeks to the gallon in my gas tank, which is unheard of. I am talking into a microphone to the world. (laughs) There is a freaking global pandemic underway. Some people I know are joining together and some people are falling apart. I have never cooked and cleaned so much on the daily or been such a homebody in my whole life. And I have no idea what's around the corner or what I am doing. And despite all of that, or maybe inspired by all of that, I am so excited about the changes. I sense the opportunity in this. I choose to see the wonder and blessings in it all. And it's just that, a choice. Not to say that it is easy, because I have totally been in the place where I can't see another way. Or even if I can see another way, I have no idea how to feel differently than I do. And that is, as I have come to understand, okay also. This idea of choice, disruption, possibilities, and structures all reminds me of my why. The essence of who I have been my whole life. You know, that part of yourself that you just cannot help but be, no matter how much effort you take to measure and filter who you need to be for the various situations and roles in your life. 
I seem to be, above all else, a campaigner. When I look back at why I chose a career in the healing profession, I see that part of me that wanted to be a guide for health and balance so that people would feel better, because if they are healthy and happy, then the world would be that much greater. When I look back at why I tied myself to trees or organized petitions and demonstrations, I see my activist heart that wanted to campaign for a world that really worked for everyone and everything. Or the part of me that has always cared for others and facilitated peace and ease for everyone as much as I could. I see that huge heart of mine that wants to shout from the rooftops for everyone to know love. Even the part of me whom is sharing my thoughts now. I desire to advocate for the true nature in us all to lead our ways. So I want to tell you about this guided nature walk that my friend went on. Um, It's in a breathtaking nature area of Vancouver Island called Goldstream Park. A place where in the summer when the salmon run, you can barely see the water through the blanket of fish. It's an amazing skeptical to see. And on the guided walk, the park biologist told her and the group of people of the life journey of a salmon and how they are born in the gold stream and as they grow and make their way to the ocean to go on the long and epic journey that we humans don't even understand. The ocean is so vast. We don't know exactly where they go except for the length of time that they go and the expanse and challenge that the ocean is for a single creature. We know it is a great feat in which they return after a lifetime, four years later, to the exact same stream. The millions of them that make their way back to the very place where they were born. There are theories about intelligence, geomagnetics, and scent, but it is a mystery that this happens. The biologist goes on to tell her about how there are always a few who don't make it back to the same stream but rather end up in the stream before, or the river after, or an inlet not too far away and yet worlds apart. Seems those fish got it wrong. Or did they? These few fish are actually the reason for the thriving of the species. They are known as outliers, and they help the species in enhancement and genetic strength. They are evolution in manifestation for all of animals, I say yes to the brave journey of the rebel salmon. I believe you who has tuned in and listened up to this point already is also on this journey, opening to new perspectives, expanding consciousness, and grounding deeper into the center of life. Tuning in to a place of stillness, that part of you that is sacred. Yes, I am referring to the intangible, which words only do a small justice to, but that every one of us has an enduring connection to. A connection often buried by the tethers of illusion, tethers that do not allow our true freedom. I am not talking about the freedom of our three-dimensional physical body, no chains and shackles kind of freedom, although that is of the utmost importance, and of course I am grateful for the overcoming of adversity and hardship that has been done before me so that I need not be delving into that need for freedom today. I am talking about the Nelson Mandela locked in prison for 27 years and yet still knows inner freedom of the mind and emotion and soul type of freedom. I am talking about the freedom that we might not even be aware of that we are missing at times. The freedom that is stifled by the self-imposed bondage, the conditionings of our past, and the undercurrent of fear that runs constantly in the background of our lives. What would it be like to know that anything is possible for you? What would you be doing if you knew that you couldn't fail? Or better yet, if you didn't have a belief in the idea that failure was a bad thing that risks your survival. Today I spoke to a dear friend who has always wanted to write a book. She has a beloved connection to words and literature more than anyone I know. And once she desired to write a book and now has currently been writing the book for seven years and counting... She was stumped as to why she wasn't finishing it or working on it at all. 
even with loads of time and all the other excuses off the table right now, she hasn't even been opening it. And as we conversed and dug a little deeper, she revealed that part of her that has let herself down multiple times by working on the book and then stopping and working on the book and then stopping. And now she's reached that place where she doesn't even want to open the book and risk letting herself down again by never finishing it. What if there was no belief that failure was a bad thing? What if there was no letdown? What if this journey of life is perfectly on the mark with its roller coaster of ups and downs, with the swings from joy to sadness and back again? What if the wounds and broken hearts are actually all beautiful? Rumi has this quote that I love. He says, You have to keep breaking your heart until it opens. Who would we be if we believed in our emancipation and really lived from that place? Who would we be if we were truly free? Thank you so much for joining me today, listening to my thoughts. I hope it paints a picture of what is to come in this podcast. And I hope that you also look forward to, as much as I do, future thoughts and contemplations and insights and really great interviews with unique and game-changing people. Thank you for sharing your time and presence with me, and I look forward to this adventure together. Take care.